W.T. Grant, or Grant's, was a chain of mass merchandise stores that opened in 1906 and closed in 1976. Thank you for your suggestions, and I hope I say Kresge's right this time. In 1906, William Thomas Grant opened his first W.T. Grant Company 25 cent store in Lynn, Massachusetts. With $1,000 he had saved from his work as a salesman, he opened W.T. Grant's store with the focus in specializing in small household wares. Many of his stores were initially of a dime store format and were located in downtowns. Grant's focus on small profit margins appealed to the thrifty shoppers, and the chain grew quickly. The stores were often referred to as Grant's, but the signs usually said W.T. Grant & Company. W.T. Grant's would evolve into more of a department store format as the years went on. The Grant stores were divided into a diverse array of departments, including women's apparel, toys, books, furniture, records and electronics, and gardening and lawn care supplies, much like modern department stores today, such as Sears and Macy's. Well, maybe not Sears, because they're hardly around anymore. Like many national chain stores and some larger department stores, Grant arranged for a low-price exclusive record label called Diva. Columbia Records produced this label, which consisted of titles also issued on Columbia's general sale Harmony label, and it existed from 1925 until 1930. Based on the number of copies you can find online, it appeared to be a good selling label. Grant continued to sell records after 1930, but they no longer had their own label. Many stores had a restaurant called the Bradford House, named after Bradford County, Pennsylvania, where Grant was born. An alternative restaurant format, the Skillet, was used for in-store lunch counters. W.T. Grant's also had a store mascot named Bucky. No, I'm not thinking that Bucky. Or that Bucky. W.T. Grant's Bucky was Bucky Bradford, a cartoon character dressed in pilgrim garb. By 1936, the company had almost $100 million in annual sales. That same year, William Thomas Grant started the W.T. Grant Foundation. The William T. Grant Foundation is an American nonprofit foundation that funds research in the social sciences with a particular focus on reducing inequality in youth outcomes and improving the use of research, evidence in public policy and practice settings. The foundation also funds career development and mentoring programs for postdoctoral researchers in a wide variety of disciplines through its William T. Grant Scholars Program. As mentioned before, Grants had lunch counters much like Woolworths, known as skillets. It was equipped with lunch counters where customers could enjoy snacks, like a frankfurter for 15 cents, and beverages for 10 cents for a whippy, the drink you can eat, while taking a break from their shopping. Grants was equivalent of four complete stores under one roof, a family fashion and an apparel store, a housewares and a home needs store, a smallwares and an appliance store, and a hardware store. Another feature of the store was that it was a four season shop where customers would find seasonable merchandise from outdoor living lines during the appropriate seasons to Christmas decorations and toys at Yuletide. 
Among the lines of home furnishings that were available were large assortments of ready-made curtains and draperies. Other home furnishing departments included furniture, lamps, and floor coverings, as well as a complete home appliance center, which would offer major appliances and home entertainment equipment. Grants had restaurants called Bradford House, but Grants also carried store-branded electronics and other goods named Bradford as well. Grants Bradford television sets, stereos, radios, and record players and combination units were prominently featured in the home entertainment shop, one of the most complete appliance departments in the Grants company's chain stores would typically feature Bradford refrigerators, freezers, washers and dryers, all backed by Grant's own guarantees. The stores also featured soft lines of goods carried in self-service type displays. Clothing of all types for all members of the family were carried along with cosmetics, household goods, pet and pet supplies. It's much like Target and Walmart today. In the post-World War II era, furniture was added, usually on its own floor. By the mid-1950s, the Grant chain had 520 stores. In 1959, Canadian retail chain Zellers once concluded a deal with the W.T. Grant Company the Grant Company was allowed to purchase 10% of Zeller's common shares and was given options that would eventually translate into a 51% effective ownership of Zeller's. In return for this, the Grant Company was making available to Zeller's its experience on merchandise, real estate, store development, and administration. Zeller's employees were sent to Grant stores and head office for training and together they made common buying trips to the Orient a practice that benefited both companies. Grants was slower than Kresge to adapt to the growth of suburbs and the change in shopping habits that it entailed. The attempt to correct this was belated. By the late 1960s, there were some larger Grant City stores, but unlike Kresge's Kmart, they did not have the uniform sizes or layouts. By the time Mr. Grant passed away in 1972, at the age of 96, his nationwide empire of W.T. Grant stores had grown to 1,074 stores, had 62,000 employees, and was operating in 42 states. From there, it was downhill for the chain. Kresge's Kmart was hurting Grant's bottom line. Grant's delay in building out its network of larger stores afforded rivals an opportunity to secure the most desirable building sites, leaving Grant's with less preferable locations, often with inadequate selling space. After the company began to lose money, funds were borrowed to pay the quarterly dividend until this became impossible. A final tactic to stay in business involved requiring Grant's clerks and cashiers to offer a Grant's credit card application to customers to boost sales in the stores. In January of 1975, W.T. Grant announced it planned to close 66 unprofitable stores by summer, with two-thirds of the stores being the newer Grant City stores. These 66 closings were added to the 26 shutdown already, or scheduled to, for January of 1975. In October of 1975, Grants filed a petition in voluntary bankruptcy, listing debts of more than $1 billion. Grants' bankruptcy was the largest retail store bankruptcy until the bankruptcy filing by competitor Kmart in 2002. The company withdrew from several states west of the Mississippi River with the closure of 201 of its 1,074 stores. 16 of these store closings were in New England. The remaining 359 stores were liquidated and closed by March of 1976. Good month and year. Several locations were later replaced by Kmart stores, and other stores took the rest. This can partly explain why many Kmart stores in northern New England 
did not have that familiar Kmart store design. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks.